Wednesday, or should I call it Suds Saturday? That's right, it's a Saturday. I'm finally uh, putting this together to put up. But um, I've had a, a fun two weeks since the last Homebrew Wednesday video that I put up. Uh, and I've been up to just a few things, but I've also been down. I've dropped down to 165.2, so I'm continuing to drop weight. Uh, that's going to that's gonna change, though. I'm going to gain some weight this next week and a half because I'll be going back to the Homebrew Wednesday homecoming. I'm going to go early and be meeting with a, a few of my buddies early. I'll be meeting with S.J. Poor, of course, and be out to the Grain Bill, his, his homebrew supply store. I'll be meeting with uh, Lermo22. Uh, flying back with me will be Man Bear Pig, 112233445, Josh. Uh, Nathan and Brad Pico, the Under the Table Brewing Boys, will be there. And we're also going to get a cameo one day from Homebrew62 uh, on the early side, Rick. So I'm, I'm pretty jazzed. I'm way jazzed. I, I've been... It's been keeping me up at night thinking about it. <laughs> We're going to have a good time, and then we'll meet everybody in Philly, and I will be bringing some stuff with me. I, I back-sweetened my um, blueberry mead, so I'm bringing back four bottles. Uh, two will probably be consumed earlier in the week, and I'll have two available to share uh, during the Homebrew Wednesday weekend. And also, I'll be bringing uh, back some of the... IPA. Now, I didn't get to finish, and I'm talking the homegrown IPA, all my own hops with also some oats in there and English yeast to give it some esters and a smoother taste. And um, that's, that's pretty hoppy. So me and the missus this weekend took a hike out uh, on the Washington side of the Columbia River. So it's in the gorge, as they call it, and uh, but on the Washington side. And it's a kind of a, a marker, you might say. It was used by Lewis and Clark. Uh, as a guide and a marker, uh, and it was called Beacon Rock, or that's the, the current name is Beacon Rock. It had another name previously, um, but at any rate, uh, we took a hike up it. It was purchased by the Biddle family in 1915 for a dollar, and they made a trail going up the sheer side of the rock. Check it out, some fun footage. blustery day. We're going to squeeze in one last hike before the rains. Hoping we get rains in Oregon. Beacon Rock, one of the magnificent seven in the Northwest. I don't know, halfway point? Oh, we busted out to the east side now on the climb. It's beautiful and green over here. Good side. Okay, we're at the highest point of Beacon Rock here. We're at the Walking Man Brew Pub here in Stevenson, Washington. <laughs> oh, hiking's great. You get to drink beer afterwards. Just looking at some of that original construction was seriously cool. Uh, so a fun 
fun day there. And then, uh, now let's just check out, though, I finishing up on the IPA. That's right, the homegrown IPA. Here you go. Well, boys, I'm racking over the homegrown IPA, and I sure wish to heck I'd gotten my reaction when I popped this lid and took a sniff. <laughs> I was blown away by the hops. This is going to be one interesting beer, but we're going to start racking it into, uh, into the keg down here. And uh, I can tell it's sitting on top of a bed of hops because I added, what was it, 2.2 and one more, uh, 3.7 uh, more ounces of hops, uh, homegrown hops in here. So that was quite a bit. This is going to be one fun IPA, let me tell you. I thought I had some gelatin, so uh, I'm going to have to go out and get some so I can clear this up a bit. But I'm going to take a look and see where we are number-wise. So uh, we had a starting gravity, uh, original gravity of 1.074 and a final gravity of 1.014. And that puts us at 7.9% ABV. That puts us right on the border of a kind of an imperial IPA. Uh, hopped all the hell with homegrown hops. <laughs> I can't wait to try this. Holy mother of God! <laughs> oh! Oh, I think... I think <laughs> this is going to be, hands down, the best IPA slash double IPA I have ever, ever made. Oh, damn. Oh, I... I can truly not wait to get this cleared up, carved, and flowing on tap. I'm I'm really excited. Can you tell? <laughs> this has been some week, and I got the homebrew Wednesday homecoming coming. You got what I mean. Cheers, boys. Happy effing Friday. <laughs> Cheers. This is my homegrown IPA. I uh. I didn't get to clear it out like I wanted to. I didn't have time. I was rushing on this one. And I, I really wanted to cold crash it for a good three days and have gelatin the whole bit. I did throw some gelatin in, but only for like two days real quick and not cold enough because I wanted to get some bottled to send out to the Homebrew Wednesday Homecoming. Anyway, it's got a nice head on there. Look, it's leaving some nice lacing, but it is definitely not clear. It's the right color, and it came out at... 7.9% ABV, so <laughs> it's kind of pushing towards that imperial side. I haven't really gotten to enjoy a glass myself yet, so I'm doing that right here with you. Cheers. Oh. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and, and you think I'm, I'm surprised, right? I mean, the fact is, is that I got to try some of it off of the muck that I was blowing off uh, when I was clearing the lines. I haven't tried a, a clean pour yet. <laughs> oh, that is just wonderfully fun for all homegrown hops. And some of what I did with this, just as a reminder, I had 18 point some odd ounces of hops in this, all said and done all from my own vines and um, I also had some oats in here to give it a, a smoothness which accomplished and I used an English yeast so it brings in some other uh, uh, esters and things and I'm, I'm digging on it this is good I'm really excited because I'm hoping I don't know if it'll happen uh, I don't know if you rushed it because I had to rush mine I'm hoping that uh, Nathan Pico is bringing some of his uh, IPA. He made one with English yeast and oats as well. So we'll see, but I can already see this is leaving some nice lacing on the glass. Oh, that's fun. I don't review my own beers, but I tell you what, 
This has got a lot of flavor. Really hoppy because it's pretty fresh hops. And uh, loads of hops, but it's, I love it. But it has some tropical notes, just light tropical as well. You're getting, of course, the citrus on there. And with having so much Cascade, you're getting some lemon as well as some grapefruit on it. But I'm getting like kind of a citrus across the board coming off of it, which is kind of fun. But I'm getting some other uh, types of fruit notes as well. I am definitely getting resin, uh, a light amount of dankness off of it. And those hops aren't really known for dankness per se, but I'm getting a, a good bit of that. But you can tell the fresh hops. They're in your face. But there's enough good malt sweetness on this. And with oats for smoothing it out, it's, it's just making it really enjoyable. Christian's going to love this. He's the big hop head. So that was kind of my uh, last two weeks in a quick snapshot, at least the fun parts. And I'm looking forward to seeing many of you at the Homebrew Wednesday Homecoming. Uh, that's going to be a blast. I'm, I'm just so psyched for this. This Kevin comes home saying, life's too short. Brew beer. Meet your brewing friends. And we'll catch you later.